Hello everyone, my name is Emmy, and welcome back to Paranormal Sight. We are back as Detective Tsutsumi, where our goal is to find the remaining curse bears. With three cursed stones in our possession, we continue to Kinshibori Park. Upon arriving, we are met with a horrifying scene. Anyways, thank you for coming by, and I hope you enjoy the video. I, I did not, I did not expect, I did not, I'm not, did not, ex I did not expect that. I did not expect that. Uh, uh, okay, all right, all right, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm shaking it off. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What the hell is this? Is, is he, is he dead? Damn it. You were too late. Was this a curse too? Hey, hang on. I'm gonna call this in. I'll leave it to you. I'm gonna take a look around. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Boss, bad news. What is it? Another mysterious death was reported in the area just now. The medical unit and forensics team are on their way, but it'll be a while before they arrive. <sighs> that is bad news. So they got someone else. You think this is the work of a curse bear? With the suspicious deaths popping up one after another, we have to assume it is. Shit. Guess we'll be stuck waiting around for a while. <gasps> oh. Huh? Boss, that phone is ringing. Was wait a little longer. Hmm, what's this? There's something stuck to the side of the phone. Come on. Come on, boss. That's not what we're supposed to be searching for. Oh. Alright, fine. We'll answer. Well, we better go check it out. You're right. But be careful. It could be a curse. Hey, I said we. You expect me to go alone? You're the one who's tough against this stuff. Don't worry, boss. You can do it. Go on now. Damn it. Um, hello. Kinjibori Park booth. Phone booth. Who? <laughs> Evening, Detective Tsutsumi. How are things looking out there? Who is this? <laughs> I finally got him. The real deal. Detective Tetsuo Tsutsumi himself. Ah, oh, wait. That's Chief Inspector Tsutsumi now, isn't it? You've come a long way since we last met. I asked you. Identify yourself. Man. Have you forgotten already? After all the time we spent together? What a time that was. As I recall, I gave you quite the runaround. Wait, is this... Fumi Chika Nejima? What? Did you say Fumi Chika Nejima? The one from the Nejima murders? Ding, ding, ding. You got it. I had a feeling that the great chief Tsutsumi would remember me. I spent 20 long years in a cell thanks to you. That shit was not easy. You should be thanking me. Should have given you plenty of time to think and atone for your sins. <laughs> that it did. I repented. My conscience is clean as a as a whistle. Bullshit! Twenty years in prison doesn't even begin to make up for the shit you did. I don't know about that. After all, just the system was gracious enough to grant me parole. What? If this is the real Fumichika Nejima, he must still have a grudge against me for arresting him. 
So this is payback. Damn it. What is your goal? What is your goal? Now, now, you gotta understand. I've repented, seen the light. I've been a good boy since I was granted parole. I even got myself a job. I've been real serious about walking the right path. Well, that's very nice. Keep it up. But it was no good. When the opportunity arose, it was impossible to hold myself back. I knew I had to give you a little token of thanks, or I'd never truly be able to have a fresh start. Do you get what I'm saying? No thanks. I don't need anything. No need to do all that for me. Just try to live a quiet life. Oh, it's no hassle. No hassle at all. It would be all too easy to just kill you, to tear you apart, but that wouldn't be very satisfying. Certainly not after 20 fucking years of waiting. That's a long time to nurture a grudge. You fucking bet it is. I let it gnaw at me, grow inside of me. I thought of nothing else. All that time, I played model prisoner. Endured the harassment those asshole guards threw at me. And I did it all for you, Tutsumi. So please, just accept my deepest and most sincere feeling. Sorry, but I'm afraid I don't feel the same way about you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why this conversation's kind of funny. <laughs> She's like, but I love you. Nah, I don't want you, man. <laughs> I'm getting broke back mountain vibes from bro. <laughs> this is too homosexual now. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. That attitude of yours is why I'm saving you for last. What is his goal still? What are you planning? What is it? Bring it on. I'm not running away. I just told you. I'm not coming for you yet. Pay attention when people talk shithead. You see, this time, this time, I want to see you on your knees, weeping in despair, begging me for mercy. Oh no, I'm so sorry, wah, wah. <laughs> Dear Nejima, please forgive me, I won't do it again. Shut the fuck up. This is exactly why I've always hated you so fucking much. It was worth a shot. <laughs> Did you really think that would sate me, asshole? You must be crazy. Well then, we're both crazy. We've got so much in common. We should be friends. <laughs> what the fuck is this dialogue? <laughs> this dialogue. Is... <sighs> I didn't expect this in this in this type of game. Enjoy cracking your jokes while you still can. I'm gonna kill everyone you care about. One by one, till there's no one left. Sorry to disappoint, but I'm a lone wolf. I don't have anyone like that in my life. Uh, boss, what about me? <laughs> <laughs> Shit, you're standing over there? Fuck, get I didn't say that, man! <sighs> or wait, are you just trying to protect me? There's not a single person you care about? I wonder what your sweet daughter would think if she were to hear that. It- Don't you fucking dare! I'm warning you! Oh, very nice. This is more like it. She's living all on her own now, isn't she? Attending university and all. Such a good girl. Oh my. Don't tell me that she just happens to live in Hanjo. What? She does? No, forget it. This isn't funny, asshole. I'm going to find you and make you pay. Ah, I love it. Keep going. I want to hear you lose your mind. It's music to my ears. Ha! Ha, fuck you! <laughs> Let's keep going. What is your goal, motherfucker? I look forward to chopping up your precious daughter. 
They'll be just like old times. I won't let that happen. Okay. How did you find me? How do you know where I am? <laughs> That's my favorite part. The sound of confusion in your voice is to die for. Hmm. This is delicious. I can't get enough. I'm not telling you shit. Have fun racking your tiny little brain for it. <laughs> hmm. I guess I could give you a little hint. Go on. Well, you see... I have the one-sided reed. <clears throat> Tutsumi, you have the evergreen beach, no? Nezima! You're a curse bearer? You're using the power of the curses? Indeed. And what a peculiar curse it is. But that's where my hints end. <laughs> God damn it! The curse echo couldn't have fallen into worse hands! Now the last question. What is your goal? Ah. One more thing we should discuss. In fact, it's the most important thing. I thought you were finally going to shut up. I'm already sick of you, so I'll pass. Oh, but... You don't want to miss this. It's the main course. You could just go after your daughter, but something tells me you'd get bored. No, I'm good. You got me all real fired up. You're in my head. Well done. But... This is a gift Taylor made for you. I'm gonna kill all the people you sort of protect. Every last person living here. You couldn't. Oh, but with this curse of mine, I can. I'll give you until dusk. By then, I could probably get a couple hundred people or so. And they'll all be your fault. Oh. It must be so hard to know they'll all die because of you. So tragic. It must be tearing you apart. <laughs> Don't fuck with me! There's no way an amateur like you could pull off a curse this strong. Unfortunately for you, I absolutely can. My curse stone is a particularly strong one. Which means I can have my fun without needing to hold back one it. It's almost like the Feast of Shadows was cast just for me. You're surprisingly well informed about this. Who was it that tipped you off? Hmm. Who oh, no. knows? Then how about I f kill myself first and I ruin you all your fun? What about that asshole? <laughs> Idiots. You think I'd call it off just because you were dead? There's no running away from you. Gah. I'll find you. I won't let you get away with this, Nejima. You've got 12 hours. Do you really think your paltry little organization will be able to make a dent in my plan? Oh, the sacrifices made will be heavy. I can't wait to see you sobbing with regret. <laughs> and I'll even have enough soul drag to pull off the Red of Resurrection. How splendid. Wait! Nejima! You're after the... Anyway, see you around. Bye-bye now. Boss! Ariel, did you catch all that? Nejima, what is he planning? Who knows? For now, we need to find him and get him into custody. Send word to HQ. But the fact that the seven mysteries are wrapped up in this is going to make things tricky. You mean with Nejima being a curse bear? Just our luck, really. It couldn't have been a worse guy. Sounds like his curse will be able to kill a lot of people at once. I'd like to avoid getting our investigators caught in the crossfire. Meanwhile, like, the dead body in the corner here. I'm just gonna, 
I'm just gonna show you, like, fucking meanwhile, there's, you know, just Shogo just here. You know? Just, just casually sitting here. Anyways. We'll use him to find out where he is. But then, we're going in alone. Oh. My. We should try to collect as many cursed stones as we can before then. Let's hurry up. Aye aye, boss. Later. It was reported that a total of three suspicious deaths were discovered that night. Nejima's threats, along with the curses, were kept secret from the general public. However, the Hanjo serial killing still made international headlines following the death of police officer Hajime Yoshimi. At Tsutsumi's request, a large-scale investigation was launched into Fumichika Nejima's whereabouts. Tsutsumi and Erio themselves spent the rest of the night looking for curse bearers in the area, but their search ended in vain. And with that, the curtain closed on that cursed night. Twelve hours to sunset. Oh my god, it keeps going. Oh my god, it keeps going. It's like the gift that keeps on giving. Hitomi's help and we unlock sorting things out. Well, I'm gonna just go down the police officer because they seem it seems gentle. Seems gentle. So let's go to sorting things out. Hajime Yoshimi's death, Ninjima's threats of mass murder. The problems just pile up, putting the detective's goal of collecting all the cursed stones in jeopardy. Tutsumi leaves Erio to handle the investigation while he catches a quick break. Let's see where this takes us. Tetsuo Tutsumi, 9 a.m. In Kinshibori Park. Sorry for your wait, boss. Sorry for the wait, boss. But I managed to gather some information. Took you long enough. Let's talk to him. He's been up all night gathering information. Must be nice to be young and have that kind of energy. But I'm glad to have him on my side. It gave me a chance to rest up. Ah, okay, let's talk to him. Things at the station were pretty hectic. But I managed to get some info. Let me fill you in. Thanks. The floor is yours. The serial killings. A total of three mysterious deaths were confirmed in the area, including the one in this park. So let's start with that one. The young man we found here. Okay. He's been identified as Shogo Okie, 25 years old. A regular old office worker who worked around here. He died of... Asphyxiation due to water in the lungs. He drowned. He drowned? In the middle of a park? That's impossible. That is not possible. It's gotta be a curse we're dealing with here. About that, boss. Isn't this park associated with one of those seven mysteries, too? The Whispering Canal. They really be testing us. Well, I've been paying attention. That's right, the Whispering Canal. It does seem like there'd be a link between a canal and death by drowning, don't you think? Sharp thinking, Erio. You're starting to get the hang of this. So, let's assume they're related. What's next? Before that, body of a woman was found behind a residential complex in Kamizawa. The victim has been identified as Tawako Hayashi. 29 years old. She was an office worker who lived on her own in the area. As for the cause of death, well... Yes? The entirety of her body was crushed by some kind of strong external force. No murder weapon was discovered in the area, but considering the way she was found, we're looking for something large, flat, and heavy that could have crushed her in one fell swoop. Hang on. Are you saying... She was stepped on, meaning? Exactly! Crushing is the foot-washing mansion's modus, modus operanda. Modus, modus operandi. <laughs> the place 
The place the body was discovered is also known to be related to the Seven Mysteries. Then is this Namigaki's doing? Shit! I knew he'd use it. Judging by the amount of soul dregs, the victim was just a regular person, not a curse bearer. Guess we should report this to Paranormal Affairs. Got it. And as for the third victim... He was identified as Kohei Jun Junoichi. 32, a teacher at Komagata High. He was found in the school's courtyard. Cause of death appears to be external trauma from a fall or heavy blow. The impact crushed his arms and legs. Since he was found in the middle of a courtyard, he couldn't have fallen from the gymnasium or the main building. A teacher dying at school? And not just any teacher. Komagata houses one of the seven mysteries. Uh, it's fool's procession, right? Right! It's where the fool's procession is supposed to be. It's too big of a coincidence. We can't rule out the possibility that this death was also the work of a curse. I see. Either way, it seems all three victims can be tied to the seven mysteries. There's something. There's probably a curse bearer at the center of all of it, pulling the strings. But you've got a point. All these strange deaths do point in one direction. That's right! Hajime's case wasn't all that different either. He also died of mysterious causes in a place connected to the Seven Mysteries. Problem is that the timing doesn't match up. He died before the curses were activated. Huh. Could he have been hit by a different curse? One that didn't have anything to do with the Seven Mysteries? Hmm. That's a thought, but if that were the case, we'd be dealing with a powerful, powerful practitioner. One who could pull off a curse like that without using a cursed stone. There aren't many people in this day and age who could do something like that. Oh really? Let's see. I don't know too much about that stuff. I'd be more surprised if you did. Hmm. Holy. Um, well, looking at these deaths, it seems like many of the curse bears acted last night. But we can't rule out that there were more killings from which the bodies haven't been found. Yikes! I hadn't thought of that. But there is one silver lining. Judging by my own curse stone, it seems that the curses have can't be activated until the sun's out. Oh, that's great news. So basically we're safe during the daytime. Exactly. It's also likely why Najima gave us till dusk. Ah, he must have known the cursed stones couldn't be used during the day. Either way, we got till nightfall to settle this. It's time we flushed out the other curse bearers. Aye aye, boss. Let's do this. Okay. Next one, the curse bearers. At the moment, we only know the identity of four curse bearers, you included. Taro Nami Gaki had the foot washing mansion, and Hideki Araishi had the ever burning lantern. We've got both of their curse stones. And then there's Nejima, claims he has the one sided reed. Yeah, that about sums it up. We better figure out who the remaining five are quick. How should we go about looking for them? There's no point in searching blindly without a lead. Let's focus on other things for now. Tracking down Nejima may lead us to the other curse bearers too. Either way, he should be our top priority. He could do some real damage if we don't get him. I also want to look a little more into Yoshimi. I've got a feeling there's some connection there. Who's Yoshimi? Aye aye, boss. Sounds like we've got our work cut out for us. Hajime. Oh, the guy that died. Their friend. Okay. Hajime Yoshimi. I asked her around Sumida's Community Safety Bureau, where Yoshimi was stationed. Seems like he was investigating the apparent suicide of a girl named Michio Shiraishi. Oh, yeah. I heard about that. He was trying to determine whether it really was a suicide. Looking into the height of the building, the force of impact, her wounds, all that. He must have suspected some kind of foul play, because he ordered a full investigation. But... It already been deemed a suicide, and his superiors told him not to go stirring things up. Huh? 
What was the evidence? Well, according to the report I found on his desk last night, the body was found at the foot of a building a ways away from the road. There was no evidence of vehicular collision, so it was ruled a suicide, but... But... He thought there was more to it? Yes, a truck or other... A truck or other fa flat-faced vehicle traveling at high-speed vehicles could have inflicted similar damage. In other words, sometimes a traffic accident can look an awful lot like a fall. So, there is a chance that it wasn't a suicide. But, what a terrible way to go. There were no brake marks on the road, meaning it could have been a hit and run. The vehicle would have hit her without slowing down at all. This is turning into quite the grisly case. But the vehicle couldn't have come out from the collision like that unscathed. Exactly. So I asked the traffic bureau to keep an eye out for a vehicles with uh, with vehicles with any vehicle with front damage. But I haven't heard from them yet. I don't think they're looking very hard. So, we've got no proof. That said, if it was a traffic accident rather than a suicide, it's possible that someone silenced Yoshimi because he was on the verge of discovering the truth. That's true. You think the driver is the one who did him in? Not quite. Yoshimi had already talked to forensics and the traffic bureau, right? His death wouldn't have covered things up. You're right on that. Even if the suicide was a cover-up for a hit and run, it doesn't seem like enough reason to kill a cop. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, that's right. Unrelated, but I got something else too. I managed to get a hold of Michio Shiraishi's address. Yoshimi went there a bunch over the course of his investigation. Might be a good idea for us to drop by too. Good thinking. Hopefully they'll give us some more leads. Alright, let's move on to the next topic. Holy... My throat! Remember the girl Yoshimi met with the day he died? One Hitomi Okuda. Community safety didn't have one contact- any contact information for her on hand. Not even in an address? Well, they had her parents' information, but when I called, they said they hadn't heard from her in a month. What? Where is she staying? Lots of family issues from the sounds of it. They even said they didn't want anything to do with her anymore. That said, she still goes to school once in a while, so we might be able to find her there. Not sure we have really have time for a stakeout right now, but she could be a key witness. Can't we have community safety tracker down for us? We can ask, but it might be tricky to get it done today. For starters, Komogata High School is closed today. Ah, oh, because of the teacher that died? That's right. Alright, but if it's not something we can do today, we might have to forget about it. Let's move on then. Okay, last- Ah. Uh... Yeah, let's keep going. I got some information about Yoshimi's fiance from Community Safety. Her name is Mayu Chozawa, 27 years old. She works as a beautician in the area. Look, I even managed to get a picture of her. She sure is a beauty. Hey, let me, let me, let me see that photo. Let me just, let me just. Where is she? Where is she? Where is she? Ah, uh, not anywhere. Never mind. But. Oh boy, here it comes. But what? Community safety hasn't been able to contact her since Yoshimi died. Not by phone or at her house. In other words, no response. Dead silence. There it is. Can't things just be easy for once? Okay, okay, okay. Now we can see. Ooh! Yeah, she, she cute. Mayu is a beautician and the fiancé of Hajime Yoshimi. A police officer of the Sumina Police Department, Maya's current whereabouts remain unknown. It's definitely starting to look suspicious. A uh, crime of passion, perhaps? Hmm? It's really common for people to be killed by a lover or spouse. 
Payushimi was well liked and they'd been together for over 10 years. You never know. Things could be different behind closed doors. I guess. But we'll have to consider the opposite scenario too. Could be that the same person who was out for Yoshimi is after this fiance as well. She could be in danger. You're right. Either way, she's important to, to the case. HQ already has people looking for her. We'll know as soon as she's found. All right, last but not least, Fumi Chika Nenjima. HQ has mobilized a search unit for Nenjima. So far, we haven't received any word. Guessing he wasn't at home or at work. <laughs> About that, apparently he vacated his last known address a week ago. You serious? So we have no idea where he lives? Gets worse. Checked in with the factory he was working at. He told me he was only there for a month before he quit. Hold on a second. You're telling me nobody caught that? Well, I had the same thought. So I spoke to his probation officer. Turns out he'd been doing house visits and interviews, but never bothered check in on his worth, uh, checking in on his workplace. He also said he lost track of Nejima when he moved to a new place. Jeez. That's so... that's just sloppy. I've heard that they're... I heard that they're giving parole to just about anyone these days because they're running out of room in the prisons. Which also means there aren't enough probation officers to look around. Dude's probably overworked. So, Nejima got to fuck about unsupervised. God damn it! That asshole was annoyingly good at faking remorse or insanity, wherever the situation calls for. Back when I arrested him all those years ago, just talking to him left a bad taste in my mouth. He's probably hiding under a false name which will make it hard to track him down. That explains why he's so brazenly made contact. That asshole. He's mocking us. Well, for now, the paperwork to circulate his name and mugshot is being filed. That's gonna take way too long. We only have until dusk. <clears throat> More information. Speaking of Nejima. Yeah? Did you manage to reach your daughter? It'd be best to put her into protective custody, as soon as possible. <clears throat> no, not yet. I can't reach her. They called, but she's not picking up. Wasn't home when they went to the house either. It's not good. Does that mean she never came home? Why weren't you the one trying to reach her? <clears throat> hey, shut up. I don't have her contact info, alright? Well... Damn, she doesn't really... I guess she doesn't trust you, huh? Either way... <clears throat> either way, I told her mother that it was an emergency and that we'd send an officer to find her and get her to safety. She was real reluctant, but I got her to agree. I guess that explains why you got divorced. But if you, her former father, can't find her, how the hell did Nejima do it? Warmer, eh? That cuts deep. Like, sorry. Just kind of slipped out. Anyway, I suspect it has something to do with this cursed echo. Back on topic already, huh? He said his curse could kill a lot of people in a short time. It may even allow him to act from a distance. I see. The one-sided reed. What was that story about again? Something about a man stalking woman who goes insane and chops her up. <clears throat> oh, right. One of the more gruesome of the seven mysteries. Last. As for Nejima's whereabouts, all we can do is throw more people at it till we find something. I'll check in with headquarters frequently to see if they've got any updates. And that's about it. Shall we continue our investigation? We could go to Komagara High School to look into Hitomi Okuda or to Michio Shiraishi's house to find out more about her. Um. So now, <clears throat> so now we leave and we can, we can, we unlock more storylines. 